Paul Mike here, the virtual investors. And today we're going to go over something a little bit different here for whether it's first time home buyers or whether you're somebody that's looking just to find a bargain property and have some equity in it, maybe build some sweat equity in it. I'm going to hand off the mic. Mike's going to run through the whole process when you buy on online auctions and break everything down for us. I'm going to hand off to you, Mike. Yep. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, I figure we're sharing our screen here today just to kind of help illustrate our conversation today, Paul, and kudos to Zoom on creating a nice little FAQ section here on the high-level uh, auction process. But, you know, most people, I would say, what, 99% of, of people when they buy a home, it's not through an auction. Right. It's a house that's listed by an agent on the MLS that they see or like a Zillow site. So someone will first start online and then maybe visit an open house to kind of get a feel for the house or a private showing, uh, you know, think it over. If you're a younger couple, maybe bring mom or dad as a, you know, quasi home inspector to walk around the house and kind of take a look at the bones and things like that. And then if you like it, you, you kind of submit an offer and there's a list price. It might be a home worth, you know, X dollars and you might go, you know, 20 K less than that, or at, you know, it's a good shape property. You really want it. And you just offer what it's being listed for. And then on the, the other side of the equation, the, the homeowner could either accept it or reject your offer. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's probably how most people shop for a home in the world, in the U S at least now with the auctions, it has the opportunity to be, it's a little bit different. However, there's a lot more opportunities to win a property a lot cheaper and get, get, get what you call Paul, like a, a deal where you can put sweat, sweat equity into sweat equity into it. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, a good term here we'll start with is, you know, what, what what's an auction, right? It's, it's a sale in which properties are bid on and are uh, sold to the winning bidder. Auctions can take place in person or at a local courthouse or online. Uh, me and Paul, we buy across the nation. So we primarily focus on online auctions. We actually don't go out and visit all our properties. However, if you're buying a home that you want to live in in a local neighborhood, you, you might want to go take a look at it, drive by it, see if you look into windows, things like that. So that's, that's something to think of with an auction property. And the way to look for auction properties is to go to different sites. Uh, there's a ton of out here. We're on one of the sites now, Zoom. There's you know auction.com. There's HubZoom. And there's a list of like of six more probably national sites. And then there's a lot of uh, more regional sites uh, as well in the industry. So get familiar with the different auction sites out there and see what the inventory is. But, you know, here's a good uh, infographic of just a four-step high level 30,000 foot view process of the auction process. You know, first is you know, no different than uh, you would with a regular home. You search, you know, mm -hmm. you, you hopefully you're pre-approved for a loan or you have cash saved up where you could buy it outright. And you, you know what you, you want to purchase a property for, and then you can filter on these auction sites, uh, properties that meet those price criteria for you. And you could utilize different sites like Zoom and, and others out there with these different filters. Hey, I want to only look at properties with four bedrooms, three bedrooms or more, um, maybe, maybe houses within this price range I want to look at or this area. And they'll kind of show you the inventory of what they have out there. So step one, search, and it's really no different than what you would on a, a Zillow or an MLS getting a few leads from an agent. Yeah. And interject a little bit, Mike, so that a lot of these properties on, on Zone, or a certain amount of them are going to show financing eligible, which means you can get a regular mortgage on, right? A traditional conventional mortgage, not necessarily an FHA. An FHA might be a little more difficult, but you could potentially do an FHA 203K what that is, that's a renovation mortgage where you're buying it, you're getting money towards the purchase plus money towards the rehab. A little longer process, but there's also, if you wanted to use the non-traditional lenders, there are some other lenders out there, but some of them are required to buy with just cash. So if you're looking for it and it's not a financeable property and you're not pre-approved with like a Kiavi or Dominion or one of these big national real estate investor mortgages, you're going to have to have somebody who either is going to lend you cash or maybe a credit union or use somebody non-traditional. I just want to put that in there because these are a little bit different than your standard where you're just getting, you know, a pre-approval letter and then moving on from there. Yeah. And then, you know, once you narrow down a search, we'll kind of go high level here and go in the, in the weeds more in a few minutes. Uh, you'll start bidding on properties you want. If you figure out, hey, I want to purchase this for X, so I'm not going to bid more than X, whatever that price point is, uh, looking at uh, what other properties sold for in the neighborhood. And if it needs work, you, you want to buy it for less than a nicely renovated home recently. So that, that's another, you want to do your homework before you set you start bidding and kind of having your mind or written down what the maximum bid is uh, for a specific property. 
then if you're the highest uh, bidder and it, the reserve is met or the, the bank accepts your offer, if the reserve isn't met, again, we'll cover that more in a few minutes, um, you're going to be uh, eligible to buy the property. Mm-hmm. And from there, as Paul said, depending on what type of property is, if it's a cash sale, you might have to close on it in 21 to 30 days. If, it, if it's a property that allows uh, you know conventional financing, 45, 60 days, whatever the bank needs to close on the property. And then at the end of the day, once settlement and you kind of go through the buying and closing process, you're a home, you're now a proud owner of a new home. So that's kind of a 30,000 foot view of the auction process. We're going to now dive a little bit deeper into each of the steps. And uh, step one here is the search that we talked about a little bit earlier, Paul, but you know, within any of these auction sites, you could search on a specific state, zip code, whatever, and kind of zoom in or out of a map or just look at a list of properties. So that's, you know, knowing where you want to buy a property is, you know, for most people, it's probably a certain city area. They want to purchase a primary residence or, or maybe even a vacation home. Yeah. So that's uh, it's, it's one way to filter down a bunch of properties, uh, just looking at it by a specific geographic region. Next is, you know, some, uh, you know, buying and owning strategies. Uh, we mentioned this earlier, you know, what's your budget? What can you afford uh, to pay? As you said earlier, Paul, is it cash or uh, uh, financing? Some properties only allow cash purchases because they need a lot of work and a con- uh, conventional mortgage won't allow uh, to, be, to lend on the property. Right. But these are some things to, to think about uh, what you can and cannot do. And you know what type of approval you'll need ahead of time uh, to get the right financing in place. Now, if you have a lot saved up and have plenty of cash from a previous property or some kind of line of credit or savings, that's great. You, you, any property there is eligible for you. Uh, however, if you need the financing, then uh, it's going to restrict your inventory. Any, anything to add there, Paul? No, I mean, you hit the nail on the head there. You're going to have certain ones that, you know, just need too much work. You're just going to be a cash purchase. That's right. They won't lie. I think, but a cash purchase or hard money what's called a hard money mortgage, but usually hard money mortgages are not meant for a primary residence. They're only meant for investment properties. Yeah. Uh, kind of a good pro tip here I, as a highlighted, it's a good thing. Different properties uh, have different occupancy statuses. You know, some are vacant or reported vacant, call it. And then some are, are occupied. So if you're buying a property, you might have to go through the eviction process for someone uh, not everyone wants to go through that process. So maybe filter out occupied properties mm-hmm. uh, and just look at vacant. Uh, how, however, you know, if you're in a state where the eviction process is pretty you know, easy, it maybe it makes sense to look at an occupied property uh, to get the, the tenants out of the, this property that you're purchasing. And to add to that, Mike, you generally get, if you're buying an occupied property, they generally sell a 25% discount. So you're getting a nice bit of equity if you do that. If you go that route, yeah, it is more difficult, but you're going to get a little additional discount on the property. Drawback is, and the caveat, you don't necessarily know what you're getting, right? You don't know what the condition is inside if you can't look in, obviously look inside the house and walk through it. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so uh, some properties, when you're looking at them online, might not have interior photos. Now, if you're local and you're looking at all properties that are in your geographic region that you live in, it might make sense to drive out there if they're vacant, peek in the windows to see what the condition on the, the first floor at least looks like. And if it's a single story home, that's great. You can probably see the whole house that way, just looking in the windows. Um, so that's, a, that's another advantage people that want to buy auctions locally have where someone like us, Paul, we buy nationally, don't always have that opportunity. Yeah, yeah, we don't always have that now. And so you can potentially use a realtor to buy these properties. Some of them are eligible to get commissions. Correct. And some of them have lock boxes where you can get access. So some you will be able to get into and some you may not. HUD, CW, COT, they usually don't allow access. But if it's a traditional bank REO, you're going to usually be able to get access. In most auction sites like Zone, uh, for instance, have these indicators on there, if there is interior access available to the property or not. Yes. If it says no, you're not going to get in because there's no lockbox. If it says yes, um, if you're working with a licensed agent, they'll give them the code and you can get in and view the property. Yeah. Okay. Shifting gears now to bidding. So you, you did all your research. You identified maybe a few properties you want to bid on. You looked at what you know fixed up home values are going for and properties that are similar condition to yours are going for. You now have that number in your head on, hey, I'm not going to bid more than X dollars. Uh, it might be a hundred thousand, 200,000, whatever the number is. And I would write that down and make sure you take the emotion out of it uh, when yes. bidding starts. So that way you don't overpay for something uh, that you're potentially interested in. So that's, you know, some of the things uh, from the bidding process here that they have outlined here on Zoom site is, you know, prior to auction starting, here's some things to consider. They have 
um, pre-auction offers on some properties. So some properties allow you the option to make an offer uh, before the bidding in an auction even starts. Uh, we commonly don't do this. We just wait till the auction cycle begins, but you know, some, uh, some properties allow that. And then I think we kind of just talked about this uh, earlier, you know, know what your minimum and maximum bid amounts are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, here's the, a lot of properties when they come on auction, if you determine your maximum bid is a hundred thousand dollars, let's just say, and the opening bids at 75, mm -hmm. Hey, start with 75, uh, and bid your way up to your maximum. Uh, if it keeps going that way, if you found a property where again, your maximum bid is still at hundred, but it might be 120,000, the opening bid, don't bid in that property. However, continue to monitor it because a lot of times with these uh, uh, bank owned properties, they'll come back on auction cycle another week or two. And over time, if there's no interest at that higher price, the bank's going to lower the opening bid amount uh, until they you know, ultimately find a buyer. So uh, continue to monitor properties is another thing I would recommend. Don't look at it once and never come back. Yeah. And be patient yeah, sure. because you might get a good number. Like you said, if they keep dropping yeah. the, the price, right. And we get that a lot. There's, there's a property uh, that I told Mike, I think I bid on for 18 months before I finally got it. Now it's a rarity, but there can be times where you do that. And I got a way cheaper later than I would have got it in my initial bid. So keep that in mind. And then at, you know, total purchase price is probably a good illustrative example that they have here. It's, you know, just because you're, you're bidding, and you're, you, when you're, when your maximum bid at hundred K, it doesn't mean that's what you're buying a house for. If there's going to be potentially a buyer's premium, that's how the auction company gets paid. And there's going to be other closing costs and real estate transfer taxes associated that vary by state and County uh, level uh, throughout the country. So just because you want a property at hundred, doesn't mean that's like your total amount that you're buying it for. Yeah. Um, and in here, in this example, they kind of give an example of, you know, what that could cost you. So, they kind of broke it down. If you, the most you want to spend is 200 K then your maximum bid should be, you know, 190 in this example, because that will cover that 5% buyer's premium, which is 5% times 190 or just under 10 K. Uh, and that be your uh, ultimate purchase price. If you were like a cash buyer for an instance. Uh, and again, that limit, that number still doesn't include closing costs uh, and everything else associated with the settlement process. But uh, just something to add in there that the total max bid that you win it at isn't the final dollar amount. Good point. And then the last thing here they have is bid increments. And, you know, some auctions start low and the bid increment could go up by a thousand dollars every time, you know, 65,000, 66,000, 67,000. Sometimes you see a 2000, 5,000 higher priced homes, you know, 25 K bid increments. Uh, so 25,000 bid increments. So it's going to vary by property by auction. Uh, and so that's just another thing to be aware of in, from a bidding strategy. Yes. And then just while you're talking about bidding, you mentioned it a little bit earlier. Sometimes there will be a reserve price there. Let's say you're bidding on a property, you know, it starts at 60,000, but the reserve price is 1095, call it. Um, once you get to that reserve number, that means the seller is going to accept that offer, right? So the highest, the highest bidder at that point is going to win that property. Yeah. Good point, Paul. And then step three here, plugging away is just the buying process. Uh, if you think about the infographic that we looked at earlier and they highlighted a few things that are considered during the buying process. It's the financing, it's the fees, it's the documents, the title, and it's the closing process. So Paul, do you want to add anything to any of these here? Um, yeah, I'll jump on that real quick there because a lot of times the bank will want you to use their title company and that's great because sometimes they'll pay a few extra fees However, if you want to really protect yourself, your title company that you choose is going to be in your corner and not miss any things. And Mike and I in the past have been burned a couple of times, not for big dollars, right? But small things because the bank's title company, which sometimes we were forced to back in the day, um, we had to utilize them. And there's some of these small little liens would show up for two, three, four hundred dollars, right? And they wouldn't always necessarily cover them um, or disclose a lot of that stuff. And and sometimes their fees are a little bit more, and sometimes they're a little bit less, depending on on who the seller is. So just keep that in mind. You, you usually want to choose your own because by choosing your own, they're gonna be in your corner, go at your pace the bank's title company will always try to push the sale and push you to close as quickly as possible. And you may not be ready if you're a conventional buyer, you need to wait till the appraisal's done and everything is all set in stone before you can go ahead and uh, close on it. Yeah. I mean, ultimately what's going to happen too, is when you win, you'll get notification from the auction company that you're the winning bidder. 
uh, you'll fill out a checkout form and all that checkout form is just general information that goes on the contract to purchase the property. And once the bank sees that they approve, they'll send it back to you for signature. And then usually you have what, a few business days to send over some kind of earnest money deposit yeah. that's identified up front when you're bidding on the property. They kind of tell you it might be $500. It might be 5% of purchase price, whatever. It's going to vary by asset or by property. So uh, ha- be aware of that. Be ready soon too uh, once you sign a contract, and then you can f- fund the remaining balance whether whenever your closing is twenty, thirty, forty five days out, uh, whether it's a bank loan that you're getting or cash purchase. Mm-hmm. And then uh, along the way, they'll send you additional documents to sign. But you know, communication is keys during the, the buying process. You know, talk to your title company, uh, talk to the au- auction company, making sure uh, you know everything lines up as as needed for the closing. Okay. And then the last one here as part of this high level process is, is, is owning, right? This is the best part, right? Congratulations. It's over. You actually own your, your property, whether it's a primary residence an investment property or a vacation home. Uh, so this is a, like we said earlier, a different way that 99% of people don't think of buying a purchase, uh, buying a property out there. And then there's a lot of opportunities and, and there's a risk too, that you can minimize uh, when buying these properties through auction. Yeah. And then usually when you close at this point, the banks are usually going to leave a lockbox on there, which has the key. So you'll be able to get access to the property. If they don't have that for whatever reason, they'll um, be able to give you that. Usually if there's a listing agent, they'll be able to get you the key and get you access there. And Mike and I, a lot of times we're buying properties that don't necessarily have either. And we have to get a lock, a locksmith out there to change the locks. Right. But if it's something you're going to be living in, obviously it's going to be in your area and it's vacant. You're going to be able to go swap them out and take care of that yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Basically if you're owning it for yourself and it's vacant, you know, it, it's no different than others, any sale at this point, right? The house is vacant. You get the keys where the lockbox code to get access to keys, you have your mover set up or whatever you want to do first at a property and then fix it up first a little bit and then move in or whatever else your strategy is. But uh, anything else to add to this kind of high level process that we covered uh, earlier today, Paul? Yeah, absolutely. Just kind of to give a whole general overview. So when I bought my first house, it wasn't an auction property, but it was called an estate sale. So somebody had passed away and they sold an estate and it needed work. And it was discounted, right? The property was discounted. Well, these are no different. These properties that are on online auctions are discounted as well, right? They're not, if the, if the market value is 350 and these things need work, they're not going to be selling at 350. Odds are you're going to be able to get it with some equity. You're going to be able to get it at a discount because it does need that kind of work and does need um, renovations in order for you to move in there and make it to what to, to the way you want to. So you can really get some nice sweat equity in a property pretty quickly this way. And think about it this way too. You're not fighting competition. You're not, you know, in a general one that's on the MLS, you're fighting with everybody else out there, every mom, um, mom pot home buyer out there. So with, with this, you only have maybe a select few, maybe nobody's bidding against you. It could just be you bidding on a property. So you really limit um, your risk from that perspective of getting outbid by people, right? You're really limited because there's usually less eyes on it. So I just want to put that out there. It's where you get some nice sweat equity and you can really take advantage of that and you know, pull a home equity line of credit or cash out refinance later on after the renovations are done. As long as the rates have dropped and then you're in pretty good shape. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, hopefully you all got some uh, value out of this video while walking through the high level process of the auction process. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the uh, comment section below and we'll answer them. If you got any value out of this, please share this video and smash the like button. But uh, otherwise, have a great day, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank you.